ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर प्रोफेसर राठौर माई कलीग डॉक्टर पांडे फ्रॉम आई सी ए आर नवीन चौधरी डॉक्टर अजय शर्मा एंड ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू दिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट लेक्चर सीरीज आई डीम इट ए प्रिवेलेज टू पे माई होमेज टू प्रोफेसर के एन नाग हु वॉज नॉट ओनली एन आउटस्टैंडिंग टीचर एन आउटस्टैंडिंग एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर बट ऑल्सो माई ओन टीचर हु वॉज ए रोल मॉडल In fact, uh, she played a very important role in developing Agriculture University in Rajasthan uh, through the transformation years which went by, and therefore uh, I deem it a honour uh, to have been uh, asked to deliver this Professor K N Nag Memorial Lecture. Uh, the topic given to me also is very important and dear to my heart because uh, it's important. that uh, we improve the quality of agriculture education agriculture since independence occupies a place of preeminence because of uh, its impact on our economy uh, both government and also institutions were developed and uh, starting from 1960 when first agriculture university was established in pandagar by eighth plan we had 28 agriculture universities in fact the agriculture revolution all these two development of uh, very skilled human resource in the country and uh, initially all state government and central government were keen to develop these agriculture universities and also we had an advantage that initially the universities which were set up had a twinning arrangement with universities overseas especially from united states to america and as a result of which much of our faculty of the initial universities were trained today we can take a pride uh, in achievements of uh, 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 indian scientists especially agriculture scientists that our production has increased from 51 million tons in 1951 to almost 293 million tons now last year that was the figure and uh, the story is the same in respect of uh, milk we have now uh, almost 177 million tons of milk in the country uh, the same story for uh, uh, fish production the same story for oil seed production and uh, also in vegetables uh, horticulture especially in horticulture we have surpassed uh, in terms of production our food grain production and we are still second but uh, soon we will become first now all this has happened because we developed institutions which uh, generated uh, qualified human resource and also the support from uh, government especially the human resources which were developed they developed technologies we took these technologies to the farming community and the high receptivity of the farming community helped increase our food grain production uh, from 28 agricultural universities and uh, at the end of the eighth plan today we have 75 agriculture universities we have almost 394 constituent colleges and if we add uh, the colleges outside uh, these uh, agriculture university system we have a large number and uh, today we are uh, able to enroll a very large number uh, because of uh, this uh, increase in the number of uh, uh, students which have been enrolled it's very important that the students who come out Are qualified will have to go for blended learning, which means that it would be uh, online learning supplemented by maybe a, a contact uh, a contact learning. Uh, Our is being a technical education. We will also have to take care that proper skills are inculcated among student community. And in order to do that, uh, the new uh, uh, change because of Corona 19 is that we will have to really train our faculty wholesome. uh because this is not something that we can convert any video lecture into pdf format and uh, show that in fact it allows us to prepare online learning both contextually and also in content wise so that the students uh, acquire learning skills and assessment should be on the basis of learning outcomes we will also have to design how to take examination because examination is central to providing or testing of skills that have been imparted 
Now I will come to a few of uh, the major reforms which are still required. As I said, we have brought in a lot of reforms. It's not ICR, I must compliment everybody right uh, from the uh, uh, beginning. People really are wedded to improving quality of education and therefore we have been able to bring a lot of reforms. We have connected uh, all institutions, both ICR, uh, institutes as well as universities uh, during a time of NATP uh, through network. Uh, then we also have made FERA, which is uh, now all journals are available online to people. And then we still would have to need investment to connect universities for online learning. You know, for example, infrastructure uh, facilities will have to be really revamped. Uh, I'm happy that now we have a National Agriculture Higher Education Project, NAHEP, uh, through which uh, the another major set of reforms are being embedded. Uh, this uh, project also allows us uh, an opportunity in times of uh, a crisis like and then uh, this Corona-19 to set apart funds for meeting uh, the new eventuality. In fact, this is a challenge. We uh, are capable of accepting this challenge and we are able to uh, overcome the effects of this uh, corona. So post-corona, I think uh, the first and foremost major task would be uh, training of faculty. Second important part is we have to learn uh, doing uh, differently than we have been doing. You know, for example, we will have to have uh, collaboration. Collaboration should be the buzzword uh, hereafter. Uh, if you look at in Hong Kong, 60 institutions have come together to develop e-learning modules or especially online learning modules for people. I think in India, we shall have to do it. We have strength in every university. Universities need to collaborate. And it's not only agriculture, universities need to collaborate. We need to have collaboration with IITs, with other institutes which are digitally advanced than what we are. So uh, in my assessment, the collaboration with various institutions uh, which are digitally advanced, help in training of our faculty, in sending our infrastructure. While we do that, uh, we also have to be aware of some limitations that might come. Uh, one of the major drawbacks that I, I can uh, foresee is that uh, there are two groups, privileged group and disadvantaged group. I think this digital divine must not put any restriction to our student community. And for that reason, we'll have to really look at how do we really overcome this. Uh, one of the things could be that uh, we'll have to provide some resources, uh, provide support to the students from a disadvantaged group, especially in areas where uh, connectivity may not be there. And uh, this will be a challenge as to how do we overcome this part. The other part is uh, improving the governance at universities. Uh, when I talk about governance, I'm talking about autonomy. For example, uh, the autonomy of uh, most universities is eroded. If you ask everybody, they will say that. In my assessment, uh, I think very few people in the system are wedded to autonomy. Uh, everybody wants uh, decentralization to their level. They don't want to give decentralization down the level. I think uh, uh, in this post-19 COVID era, we'll have to really look into how efficiently we manage with limited resources. And for that reason, uh, e-governance would be uh, important. Uh, there will be also a, a greater level of decentralization. Uh, and once you do decentralization, we can go for accountability. Uh, the other part would be the recruitment part of uh, faculty would have to be really a uh, different way than we have been managing so far. I think we really need very competent people. Uh, young faculty is uh, uh, very uh, receptive to change in, uh, change in ideas. I'm also glad that even the faculty, which is the old timer, they are also changing. I think it changes the need of the hour, and uh, I hope that with the due uh, support from ICAR, with due commitment from individuals, because uh, it requires a different order of commitment now. It's not only uh, that the uh, vice chancellors can enforce it, it is uh, a duty of every individual who is a part of that at the times of such crisis, we all unite together. We all do whatever is uh, required of us to do. And uh, uh, I'm confident that with the kind of expertise we have, with the kind of dedication we have, with the kind of support that is available and going to be available, we'll make a match and we will really come out with flying colors. Thank you very much.